I'm through playing games with you, Mr. Euler. This is your last chance to prove that all these equations actually really mean something in the real world. Fine, sir. If this is what it takes, I will show you a practical example. Let's look at a W-shaped member or an I-shaped cross-section, and we will look at it for buckling both about the strong axis, so buckling about this axis, bending like this, and we will look at it for weak axis. Say there's another brace here. We'll look at it for weak axis buckling too. Take a look at this example and learn. Alas, it is my last chance to prove to you that I can be my theory, my Euler buckling theory can be useful in engineering design. So let's take a look at example two. In example two, we have a steel column that is a particular shape and is 25 feet long and is fixed at the top and bottom as shown. To delay weak axis buckling, we provide braces at a distance of 20 feet from the bottom. This is only going to prevent weak axis buckling and not strong axis buckling. We'll assume that the braces are pin connected to the column. We want to determine the maximum load P that the column can support and to check both elastic flexural buckling and yielding. Again, I can't keep that accent up for a whole example problem. So let's go ahead and move on to the boundary conditions in this particular problem. So we see that on the left hand side we have what we classify as strong axis buckling. It is fixed at the top and fixed at the bottom, so we say that this is a fixed fixed condition. We also see that the total length over which the strong axis is present uh, that can possibly buckle, that total length is 25 feet. Now let's look at the weak axis mode of failure. Now for weak axis buckling, we've supplied a brace part way up. That's going to result in a fixed pin condition. So this is going to change our effective length factor, k. We also have different lengths. So we have a length of 20 feet here. Now we could also check the length of 5 feet, but because the 20 foot is longer, the weak axis buckling strength over the 20 feet will be smaller than it is over the 5 feet. So in my example, I'm just going to check the 20 foot. Now since the lengths are different for strong and weak axis buckling, and because k, the effective length factor, is different, I want to check both of these as possible failure modes in this particular example. So first I want to check buckling. So I'm going to check buckling for both weak axis and strong axis buckling. Now since weak axis buckling usually controls, that's going to be kind of my priority. So I'm going to check weak axis buckling first. So I look at the weak axis, and I want to come up with some of the properties that are acting in the weak axis direction. So from the values I have here, I have that the given length is 20 feet. And I want to convert that to inches, so that's 240 inches. I need to come up with my effective length factor, k, so I need to go back to that table on the previous page. I see that for a fixed pin condition, I have case b, like we had in example 1. Case b, they recommend for design to use a value of k equal to 0 0.80. So I will use a value here, again, of 0 0.80. Lastly, when I look at I, I want to use my weak axis moment of inertia. From the given properties, my weak axis moment of inertia is 44.1 inches to the fourth. All right, so now I'm not just going to plug this into my P critical equation, pi squared EI over KL squared. So I have pi squared times E, which is 29,000 KSI, times I, which is 44.1 inches to the fourth, divided by the quantity of K, 0 0.80, times L, 240 inches, total squared. So this gives me a resulting P critical for weak axis buckling of 342.5. Four kips. Again, it's important that I put my length in inches because I have both square inches and inches to the fourth in my numerator, so I need to make sure my length 
matches the units so that I get the correct units for P critical. Next, I want to look at strong axis buckling. And let me just move this up because I did a poor job of spacing this out. So for strong axis buckling, my length was a total of 25 feet. So 25 feet is 300 inches. Now my boundary conditions for strong axis buckling were fixed fixed. That pertains to case A from, that, from this table. So if we look at case A, the design value K equals 0 0.65. So this is what I'll use in my p-critical equation. Finally, my moment of inertia about the strong axis is 307 inches to the fourth. So I go in and I'm going to use pi squared ei over kl squared. So that gives me pi squared times 29,000 ksi times 807 inches to the fourth. Sorry, not 800. That's 307 inches to the fourth. Divided by the quantity of 0 0.65 times... 300 inches squared. So doing my math, P critical in this instance equals 2,311 kips. All right, like I said, weak axis usually always controls. Um, and even with the smaller length, weak axis still controlled pretty significantly for this column member. Finally, I want to look at yielding. So yielding comes back to our normal stress equation, P over A. So I'm going to rewrite that to find the force for yielding as my yield stress times my area. So my yield stress was given to me as 50 KSI for this particular member. My area is given to me as 11.7 inches squared. That should be inches squared there. Doing the math, that gives me the force to cause yielding as 585 kips. The very last step of my problem needs to decide what is the maximum load P that my column can handle. So if I'm incrementing P from 0 up to a value, as soon as I hit 342.4 kips, I will suspect that I'll have weak axis buckling failure. So therefore, my max load that this column can handle is 342.4 kips, and then I would specify that weak axis buckling controls. So that means that weak axis buckling is the controlling mode of failure at this particular load level. Well, friends, I must say I had a very good job done. I look forward to working more buckling problems with you in the future, but I'm confident in your ability to check both strong and weak axis buckling as well as find the yielding strength for these columns. Well done. I hope this is enough to convince that nagging cop that we are on the level. All right, sir, it seems everything checks out. You have a safe day now, and don't forget to buckle up, because apparently it's Euler's Law. No, 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 please, sir, it's only a theory.